Hello, we are going to look at chapter 3 this week and we will try to understand how we might display our data. Uh, there are different ways to represent uh, your data and as, as you remember in previous chapter we collected data and we organized it and we uh, created tables like frequency distributions and grouped frequency distributions. But most of the people do not like to look at data. Uh, seeing just numbers might be sometimes a little bit tiring for your mind. So what we try to do is we try to uh, bring out some of the patterns in the data and show it to everyone and so that everybody will understand the same things. We use graphical forms for a communication between data and uh, other people. So there are very nice different uh, graphical techniques. But in this chapter, we are just going to look at the main uh, techniques that are used in statistical analysis. And probably while we are studying it, you will see that uh, you might have already seen some of these graphs in uh, magazines and newspapers or on television programs. Uh, uh, the first one is going to be a dot plot and dot plot is a rather simple idea. What we do is we identify the minimum and maximum of our data set and then uh, we draw a line and on this line we identify the minimum and maximum so the limits are between minimum and maximum and we put some uh, numbers between them and then we look at our data and so for each observation value we create a dot okay so let's see an example here so what we see here is we have the scale okay from minimum to maximum and we have the numbers okay so we can easily identify each observation value so it can give you a little uh, uh, general idea about what might be the center of your data is uh, in the first one it's very difficult as you can see but in the second one you may see that maybe the center of data is somewhere here and this example comes from the grades so uh, the dot plot can be drawn for one variable or can be used for comparison so in this uh, figure from your book we have female and male uh, grades from mathematics exam and as you can see the uh, female scores are widely distributed in our interval whereas the male uh, scores are less uh, variable than the female scores so there is a compactness here and there are one or two observations which doesn't follow the general structure of the uh, remaining data points so maybe these are outliers that we will study in the future so here uh, the variability of the female scores is bigger than the variability of male scores which we will study in the future in chapter 5 what the variability means and how you might use it so the dot plot gives you a very simple idea about what is going on with your data and also dot plot allows you to see what is the maximum and what is the minimum of your data uh, the second one is called stem and leaf display and this is uh, coming from just need to think about a tree. Uh, if you think about a tree, uh, you have branches and we have leaves attached to branches. So what we do in uh, stem and leaf display, uh, we create stems like multiples of 10 uh, or hundreds. So then we put them here. So one, two, three means 10, 20 and 30 respectively. And also what we do is uh, then the remaining part of the data observation comes on the right hand side. So in my data, I have an observation with a value of 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 17 and 18. So just by looking at steam and leaf display, I can see that the maximum of our observations is 35 and the minimum is 14 okay so as you can see when the value is equal to 20 to exactly stem value we have to put a zero for the corresponding observation so there are four zeros so it means that there are four observations with the value of 20. so it's also easy to count how many objects we have in our data set one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 20. So there are 20 observations in my data set. So here are all the observations. So what it does is uh, it gives you the general spread of our data 
it's a simple graphical form and while collecting data without using a computer you can use stem and leaf display to get an idea about what kind of data you have in your hand but once the number of objects increases uh, creating a stem and leaf display gets uh, a little bit difficult so for a small data sets you can easily use stem and leaf display for display purposes and understand what might happening in your data uh, the most widely used uh, graphical form is called bar chart our bar graphs uh, and what we do is in bar charts we classify categories and the bar charts are usually used for categorical data and as you can see here we have a simple bar chart and uh, we have December November October and September sales values and for each month we have one uh, column and these columns can be represented by different colors so it's up to your the computer you are working with so what you do is we um, find the highest frequency among these categories which is about 38 so we can create a scale for sales so 10 20 30 and 40 so it covers the highest frequency so we put these columns respectively of these frequencies for each category so when you just look at this simple bar chart it's easy to see that in december you made a sales of five whatever it is books as i can see it, and 11 books on september looks like the october was the best month for you and you sold uh, 38 books in this store or wherever this data is uh, collected so the simple bar chart is uh, used for categorical data and for each category we need a column and the height of the column is uh, represented by the frequency of the data set but sometimes you can use relative frequencies or the percentages again then you will uh, adjust this scale to accordingly and you don't need to make it horizontal or vertical either way is possible so you may have vertical simple bar chart or horizontal bar chart and there is another one uh, bar chart actually th there are lots of bar charts that you can draw because uh, it's limited with the computers okay the many computers can uh, software can draw very nice bar charts and one of the bar charts is here so it's uh, just like a uh, data from a contingency table uh, but we can add some other dimensions here we have only one dimension uh, month the sales of a book but here we have books films and games so there are three different activities uh, for uh, students this data so in first year uh, the activity book activities eight film activity four and uh, games activity is seven so what we can do is we can look at each activity during this time period what do first year second year third year and fourth year students are doing so looks like in the second year reading a book is not uh, appreciated by students but in the second year uh, working with games or playing with games is uh, going to be a better thing to do according to students i don't know so bar charts are simple to create and it uh, once you create a frequency distribution of your data you can create a bar chart of your data set so you can draw it by hand but most of the time we will use computer software uh, bar charts are used for discrete variables and when you have continuous variables and you want you would like to create the graphical form of your data we will use histograms and if you remember from chapter 2 we have grouped frequency distributions in group frequency distributions we create categories like 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 and if you remember the first category like 0 to 10 uh, covers up from 0 to 9.9999 but if the value is equal to 10 it will be in the second category so it's reflected in the histogram so we have here uh, a data set and here it says 8.5 to 10.5 is the first category so just by looking at histogram you can create a grouped frequency distribution so you can just uh, look at the height of the variable for sorry each column and then you can find the uh, frequency of this uh, category so here uh, unlike 
the bar chart, as you can see, there is a difference between two columns. So there is a gap between the columns. Again, here from year one to year two, we have a gap, but not in histograms. The histograms, uh, the columns are adjacent uh, to each other. Okay. So histograms are used for, again, continuous variables. And it's very nice to have a histogram for a continuous variables. And it will be useful in the future in continuous distributions and specifically normal distribution and t-distribution. Uh, we will use the histograms most of the time. And the histograms will show you the symmetry or asymmetry of your data. As you can see, this, we have here a fairly symmetric data set. So the Probably the arithmetic mean or the average that we will see uh, in the next chapter is somewhere around here. And we have a fairly symmetrical uh, distribution of our data, even though there is a little bit asymmetry here. This looks like a very sym uh, sy symmetric distribution. So it will give you an idea about the variability and where the center might be in your data. Uh, another graphical form we might use is called pie chart and the main reason we call it as a pie chart it looks like a pie so what we do is we create a relative frequencies of the categories and multiply the frequencies uh, relative frequencies by the 360 degree to create a pie of each category and we draw it so it, it's easy to create but uh, usually we do it by computer so calculating a 300 or 120 degree in a circle by hand might be difficult so it's better to use a graphical software to draw a pie chart and again it gives you a lot of information we have uh, travelers europe 42 percent and united states of america 29 uh, percent alaska africa asia uh, 17 percent so it's not united states but the overall america 29 percent so highest uh, percentage goes to europe and the second one is america blah blah you can make some uh, decisions or not uh, results out of this graphical form so you can make pie chart talk for your purposes and with the advance of the softwares we can create a three-dimensional pie charts but when you create a three-dimensional pie charts it's easy to make some cheating okay so what you can do is uh, maybe you can create a very powerful color here which will take your eye directly to this category so what you see here is uh, the percentage of Europe is in front so the it's just in front of you so it's highlighting the Europe 42 percent maybe you can rotate it a little bit and put America here and Europe the other side maybe the uh, pie of the America might look like a little bit bigger so if you want to play around with pie charts and if you have a Microsoft Excel so as a, a Anadolu University student you are allowed to download Microsoft Excel to your computer so download the Microsoft Excel and draw a pie chart and try to switch uh, between three dimensional and two dimensional pie charts and try to rotate them and then you will see uh, some of the changes in every pie chart uh, another chart we call is line chart and we usually use line charts in time series data analysis and it will show uh, a long-term uh, behavior of your data so here is another example from your data so we have an axis maybe it's related with the time here and we have the values in this time interval so we have one two three different data sets for the same time period and maybe these are the same values from different countries okay so as you can see this uh, the bottom one is pretty steady so it's just uh, parallel to the timeline but as you can see is the second one is getting uh, less and less so there is a tendency towards negative so it's then it settles down a little bit and now it starts going up okay so maybe you can make predictions about the future what might happen but it looks like in the long term the first one goes steady so it, maybe it will continue as a so steady data set and the last one here is the pink one as i see it as a pink here so it goes very rapidly to down and it's still continuous 
to go downward so it's almost reach zero and I don't know what the variable is what the value if there is a possibility to get a minimum number maybe it will continue to a negative number uh, the last one we are going to look at in this chapter is the scatter plot and scatter plots are used in actually statistics 2 course to uh, look at the relationship between two continuous variables and they are very useful and this in your book the author of the uh, chapter created a very nice graphical form of the scatter plot and scatter plots are the two dimensional representation of two variables but uh, our author added a three third dimension so what we do is in we have in one axis we have one variable and in the second axis we have the other variable and the scale is adjusted according to each variable then uh, we draw each data point so if you make a sales on Monday for five products so Monday to five blah blah and uh, here what we have temperature versus five days so five days we have temperature of about eight uh, degrees blah blah and also here is you can see the third dimension is added so the temperature is 2 4 6 8 10 and 12 so it gets bigger and bigger so as you, the temperature goes up as you can see the size of the circle gets uh, bigger so it gives you an extra information just by looking at it so what we see is a lot of data points around here so there's a uh, center of this data or the main structure of the data is somewhere here but looks like these data points are random spread around so in the future in regression analysis we will see how we can handle this data okay so this wraps up the idea about the uh, graphical forms and graphical forms are necessary to use uh, to communicate data with others some people do not like to look at numbers but in order to show what is going in in your data you might use graphical forms to express your information and see you next week's chapter